Thousands of huge killers. Black Cayman, the largest predator in the Amazon. Anaconda, the world's biggest snake. And along its banks, the largest cat in the Americas, the mighty jaguar, stalks its prey. In this land of giants, even the flowers come in extra large. And below the surface, a legendary killer is living up to its reputation. These are piranha, and blood in the water can trigger a feeding frenzy. But in this land of killers, Something is preying on the predators. Dangers lurking in the murky Amazon waters. But what kind of killer can take on a piranha? This animal might look cute, but it can grow to nearly two meters, that's over six feet in length. It's a giant otter, known to the locals as the river wolf. Their playful behavior masks the fact that they're super efficient river hunters. These animals really are built for the kill. Their bodies are as streamlined as torpedoes. Their feet are well webbed for swimming and their tails are long and flat and used like rudders. Their fur is incredibly dense. The outer layers keep the warm under fur dry even after a long time underwater. They can close their nostrils when they dive. They can also shut their ears. But what makes them such incredible predators? It's thought that their long whiskers are key for detecting the movement of prey. You can tell how important they are. It's murky down there. Not only do they have to find their fish, they also have to chase it. Piranha are fast, so the otters are equipped with fantastically efficient webbed feet. The back ones for speed, and the front ones for steering. The giant otter's whole body is designed for underwater pursuit. Even with those sensitive whiskers, they have to get quite close to the fish they're chasing. The whiskers pick up vibrations in the water, and their streamlined bodies and steering help them move in on their target. During deep dives, their pulse can drop to a fraction of its normal rate which conserves oxygen and lets it stay underwater longer, up to four minutes at a time. Even deadly piranha stand no chance against the sharp teeth of a river wolf. It eats its prey head first, the better to avoid those razor sharp piranha teeth. The legendary piranha has become a tasty treat for a river wolf. Still to come on Built for the Kill. A giant North American predator. And a huge jawed killer grabs a quick bite.
rivers shape our world and the behavior of the animals that live in and around them. When you look at them from space, the power of rivers is obvious. Their influence spreads beyond each bank into the surrounding landscape. Where there are lots of rivers, there are lots of animals. For them, waterways can be highways and a place to settle down and start a family. And where there's lots of wildlife, predators won't be far away. In the rivers of Alaska, the waters are packed with dying fish. But these salmon aren't victims of pollution or poison. It's all part of their life cycle that sees them returning to the rivers they were born in to lay their eggs and then die. Each pair of salmon could have laid up to 8,000 eggs. An icy riverbed isn't the coziest nest, but if the eggs survive a few short months, the salmon cycle will begin again. Dippers are built to hunt under fast-moving waters like these rapids. They're also the only aquatic songbirds in the world. These feet can grip onto stones underwater, so the dipper is able to run along the bottom of the stream. But how can this little bird stay underwater for such a long time? It's the dipper's feathers that hold the secret. Looking after their feathers is as important to them as maintaining diving kit is to a scuba diver. The outer feathers are like a diver's dry suit. They're sleek and water repellent. This stops the dipper from becoming waterlogged a potential disaster in this cold water. The underlayers are short, soft and downy. They act like thermal underwear to keep the bird warm. But they have to keep the outer feathers waterproof, so they transfer oil from glands at the base of their tail. In dippers, these glands are about 10 tons bigger than those of other similar sized birds. These pint-sized hunters get their name from the dipping movement they make when alarmed or when resting between dives. The dipper looks for potential food. It's thought that translucent membranes which go across the dipper's eyes help it to see more clearly underwater, a bit like slipping on a diving mask. They swim underwater with their wings, and special flaps stop water getting up their nasal passages. These dives drain energy, 
so the dipper's body is built to use it efficiently. They can store more oxygen in their blood than many other birds, and the amount of blood going to non-essential organs decreases when they dive. When they dive, they're surrounded by a net of bubbles, which helps keep them dry. These bubbles might normally rise back to the surface, but hunting in fast-moving streams counteracts this. All this makes them successful at feeding, where most animals would find it hard to keep their balance. Those fertilized salmon eggs that escape the dipper's sharp beak and other pearls will eventually hatch. When they're mature enough, the survivors will head out to the Pacific. There, all kinds of dangers await them. Some killer whales specialize in preying on salmon. But if they survive life at sea, Adult salmon head for their birth river. Chemical signals guide them back to the stream where they hatched and where they'll spawn and die. Upriver, the nets of local fishermen pick off more salmon. Once they enter the river, they never eat again so each rapid is a greater challenge. Buffeted by the water, they need to rest before attempting the next sections. It's not just the local fishermen who know that the salmon are returning. Other anglers are going fishing. And find all the best fishing spots. At rapids like these, on Alaska's McNeil River, a wily group waits for the salmon to arrive. If you believe everything you read, you'd get the impression that bears are a scary mix of big teeth, sharp claws, and serious aggression. of the year, their idea of a good meal is a mixture of fruit, berries, and roots. Berries and nuts are a good source of sugar and fat. A bear can get through 200,000 of them in a single day. They're solitary creatures and usually only hang out with other bears when they're young. Bears are opportunistic feeders and will catch large animals when they can, but a big animal takes a lot of energy to catch, so berries are an easier bet. It's rare for such a large predator to eat so much fruit. Most other big predatory mammals use their strength, speed and teeth to catch a bloodier diet. But before their winter hibernation, bears must put on a huge amount of weight. And the need to pile on the pounds coincides with the return of a favorite food source to Alaska's rivers. It'll be worth the bear's weight. Catching fish is a tricky business because these salmon really are slippery customers. 
Learning how to be an effective hunter is one of the most important lessons a mother can teach her cubs. Following mum is a good way to start. Scanning underwater is one method for spotting your prey. Bear's eyesight is thought to be fairly good, and this technique pays off for some of them. But it's all about practice, and each bear seems to develop its own favorite way of hunting. For some, watching from the shore works. Sooner or later, they'll put those enormous claws to use, hooking fish from the water. Others wait in ambush in the rapids. As every fisherman knows, there's always one that gets away. And while mum fishes, the cubs try too. Fish are a fantastic source of energy, and at these falls, a bear may catch up to eight salmon in a single hunting session. Another good place to hunt is further upriver at the shallow spawning ground. Even though the fish are in shallow water, the bears still need the right tactics to catch them. Here they use a sprint and scatter technique. Bears can run as fast as horses when they need to. Whenever bears catch their fish, they're surprisingly delicate when choosing the best bits to eat.